grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon text for today will be the second reading from Revelation chapter 22 as we conclude our sermon series entitled Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. Please feel free to grab a Bible from the pew rack in front of you or turn to the reading in your bulletin. My dear friends in Christ, we've walked through many different sections of the book of Revelation during this series, from, <clears throat> from Jesus calling John and telling him to write this letter to the seven churches, to a, a glimpse of the church on earth and also the church in heaven, and even a front row seat to some of God's plans for us after the return of Jesus. And today's no different. We are focusing today on the final words in Scripture, the last chapter of the Bible where the new creation is described in amazing detail right before our eyes. We're given an amazing picture of the perfection and the bliss that await us when Jesus returns and we are made perfect with him. I mean, just listen again to the first five verses of our reading for today. John writes, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will, be, will, there, will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. That sounds like perfection to me. That sounds amazing. The river with the water of life, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit. <clears throat> Nothing bad will be there. No sin, no hurt or pain. We'll be in the presence of God and we'll be made new to live with Him in perfection for all eternity. What a beautiful picture John is painting through these verses. The, the promise of perfection for all who believe in Jesus. And when I look at this picture that's given to us, I see things that remind me of things that I've experienced in my life and maybe things you've experienced in yours as well. I mentioned last week during the children's message that, that we as a family have moved a lot, and that was just with the kids. Uh, Rachel and I moved more before that, and, and back before we were married, I had moved even more. Overall, I've lived in five different states and ten different cities in my lifetime. But one thing that all those places had in common was that they were all near rivers. Every single place that I've ever lived has been within just a few miles of a river. Now, some of the rivers were bigger than others, and they all had different features about them, but there's always been a river nearby. But when I think back to the different rivers that I've lived near, I, I really don't have any super fond memories of them. With every river that we lived near, there was always some sort of danger, some sort of problem that happened, and it made living near a river to be not such a great thing. When I was growing up in Iowa, we lived near the Nishnabotna River, and unfortunately it seemed like almost every year there was a report of somebody going swimming or, or falling out of a boat or something, and, and they'd drown, and a lot of the time they, they wouldn't show up for months at a time, or if they ever did. And that was always a scary thing that, that for me, even though we never really spent any time on the river ourselves, it, it scared me that a river that was that small could be that powerful, but it really did happen almost every single year that I lived there. When we lived in Kansas City and when we lived in St. Louis, the rivers there weren't all that much fun either because the areas that the cities tried to clean up and make nice would either flood out almost every year or they would become havens for criminal activity or other problems, so they were never really all that good of places to go. The river that we lived near during our time in the Orlando area was called the St. John's River. And the part of that river that we were near was actually a really wide spot in the St. John's, and they called it Lake Jessup. And Lake Jessup's claim to fame was having the highest concentration of alligators of any body of water in the entire state of Florida. If you've ever been to Florida, that's, that's really saying something. So like I said, I don't really have a whole lot of happy and positive memories associated with the rivers that I lived near throughout my life. So when I read these words... Uh, from Revelation chapter 10, 22, it catches my attention that one of the focal points in the opening part of the chapter is this river that the angel showed to John. 
But the river that John is speaking about in our reading for today is different than, than any other river that you've ever seen, uh, seen or heard of or, or experienced. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't act the same. And really, it's nothing at all like the rivers that we know of in our world today. And there's good reason behind this. Think with me for a second about what this chapter is describing. It's talking about the new creation. It's talking about how the world, how the creation will be after Jesus returns and restores everything to the way it was when God first created all things. So think about it for a second. Think about what rivers look like right now. I mean, just take a second to picture the Ohio River in your mind uh, real quick. Think about what it looks like. Think about what you see on it. I mean, if you were walking across the Big Four Bridge right now and you looked down at the water, what would you see? Well, you'd probably see brown swirling water that's moving very quickly. You'd, you'd probably see a few barges and some other boats on the water. You might see some trash or debris floating down the river. And if you tried to look in deeper than just the surface, you'd quickly find that you can't see into it because of the color of the water in the river. Yet in our reading, John tells us about the river that is flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. He describes the water as being as bright as crystal. And the water itself is very special. The water that is in this river is the water of life. So this is no ordinary river at all. When you think of rivers here, you often find yourself thinking about stories that you've heard about people going missing while swimming or boating, or you'll think about major floods that, that are either happening right now or have happened that, that have washed away lots of homes and businesses and farmland or really anything at all that's in the way of the water. But this river that John shows us in Revelation 22 is the complete opposite. While rivers here can bring death and destruction, this river contains the water of life. There's nothing but good coming from this river. There's only perfection coming from this river, and those who see it will be enjoying the perfection of their eternal life. Those who see it are the people who will see God's face. They will have the name of God written on their foreheads. The people who will see this river and experience its joys are the people who follow Jesus and believe in his perfect work for our forgiveness. Now John goes on to describe the tree that's growing on both sides of the river. The tree of life with its 12 different kinds of fruit. And, and John says that the tree yields a different kind of fruit each month and that its leaves have been made for the healing of the nations. And again, we're reminded of the original creation narrative in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the Garden of Eden, there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it was that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that Satan used to tempt Adam and Eve to sin. You notice here there's only one tree mentioned in Revelation 22 there. There is no tree of the knowledge of good and evil because when we are made brand new in the new creation after the return of Jesus, there will no longer be any evil. So there will be no need or desire to have any knowledge of it. There will only be life and therefore the tree of life will be there with its good fruit available to all people. So what's all this have to do with us today? Now, all this talk about the river of life, the tree of life with all of its fruit, what does that do for us today? What difference does it make in our life right now? Well, think about your life for a second. Think about the lives of the people around you. Think about what the world looks like right now. Think about everything that's happening in the world around us, all the bad things, all the struggles, all the problems, all the, all the difficulties and the issues that de we deal with every single day. I mean, think about what, whatever personal trouble that you're dealing with today. To think about it in terms of a river and water, what kind of rough passage, what, what kind of rough patch in your voyage down the river of life are you dealing with today? What, what murky and rough water are you going through right now as you live out your life? And the answer to those questions will be different for all of us, but it will also be the same. Some of us are dealing with issues that we are facing by ourselves and, and we're trying to work through on our, on our own. Addiction is a big one that many people face alone as they work through it. Whether it be to, to alcohol or drugs or pornography or even, even work and social addictions, most everyone has something that they're dealing with like this. And often when we come to the realization that we're actually having this problem, we're just barely able to keep our head above water. And it's getting harder and harder to swim. 
Now, other people might be dealing with health issues, whether it's your health or the health of a family member or a friend. This is something that at some time or another in all of our lives we will go through in one way or another. And health problems can be things that can lead to other issues. Sometimes it leads to stress and anxiety in our lives because we feel as though we're completely out of control and we don't know what's going to happen. Other times it leads to money problems because we don't know how we're going to pay all the bills that are left over after the insurance is taken care of what they're going to cover. Whatever it is, that's another struggle that we deal with as we journey down this river of life. Some people have anger issues. Some people have issues with their job. Some people have trouble in their families, either with their parents or their children or their siblings or whatever. Sometimes, believe it or not, it's even problems here in the church. We continually face struggles and problems and difficulties in so many different aspects of our lives. And it can be a, tr a struggle to stay afloat as we go through all these things. And that's why this passage matters so much to us. It's a promise to us from God. It's a promise of something better that lies ahead. Calmer waters that are on the horizon. Smooth sailing. The absence of problems and difficulties. And most importantly, the absence of sin that permeates every single part of our being. That's the promise that God is making to us through this passage. That's what we can draw out of the language that John is using here to describe this river of the water of life that is part of the new creation. It's a promise of no more sin and no more problems as we live in perfection with God for all eternity. So how do we get there? How do we receive these amazing promises of God? How is it that we are going to go from this life to the next and live in perfection with no more sin and no more problems. And those questions bring us right back to our lives here on earth. A promise like this is something that sounds too good to be true. It sounds impossible. It sounds like something that we would have to work so hard to earn that there's no possible way that we could ever attain it. My friends, that last part is true. There is absolutely no possible way that we could ever earn the amazing gifts that are promised to us in these last verses from the last chapter of Revelation. There's no way that we can ever be good enough to receive this perfection from God and to live in His presence. But it's already been earned for us. We don't have to do a single thing. These promises have already been given to us and they come without cost. Just as Jesus says in our reading, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Our toll has been paid already to enter into this river of perfection. And it comes to us from another river. It comes to us from the river of the water of holy baptism. When we're brought to the baptismal font and the pastor pours that water over our heads in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are given the promise of our eternal life in perfection with God. And that promise is made to us in our baptism because of the blood that Jesus shed for us. The river of blood that came from the side of Jesus as he hung on the cross and his side was pierced by the soldiers. The debt that he paid, the forgiveness that he earned for us as he hung there and suffered under all the weight of all the sins of all the world. That is how our place in perfection has been earned. We don't have to do a single thing to get there. Even the faith that is required to believe in Jesus and to know that He did all these things for us is given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit working through us. It's all a completely free gift. And it's available to anyone and everyone. My friends, our time here is short. Jesus tells us very clearly in our reading, Behold, I am coming soon. Jesus is going to return and He is going to bring His recompense with Him. He is going to bring His satisfaction and His punishment with Him. To those who believe, He will bring them to the waters of eternal life. And to those who do not, He will send away forever. And as He says, He is going to come soon. He is going to return and no one will miss it. And when He does, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. My friends, we are living in troubled waters as we go through our lives in this world. The waters that we're going through are murky and cold and difficult to navigate. We're stuck in our sins and in the sins of this world, but there is something better awaiting us. And that something better can only come from the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, 
the beginning and the end. We can only receive this perfection from Jesus who was there when everything was created in perfection. And when he returns as the Omega, as the close of the sinful age, all those who are in the faith will be able to go with him into this perfect existence that he's promised all who believe. So my friends, believe in Jesus. Trust in his work for you, his perfect death and resurrection. Trust that just as he promised when he ascended back into heaven, that he will return one day soon. And then join all the faithful in saying these closing words of our reading. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand with me. We join Christians around the world in confessing our faith.